their rhetoric. Tonight we look at how Walid Shabbat makes his money and what he does with it. Drew Griffin has part two of his investigation. It's clear Walid Shabbat does not like tough questions. It's a stupid question. He became even more defensive when we began asking about his foundations, his tax-exempt status, and all the money he is making. He has turned what some might call hate speech into a career, trading on his past to advise law enforcement officials and religious groups about the threat of Islamic radicals. He says he was a Palestinian terrorist, jailed by the Israelis, but it's a life story based on very little evidence. But it sure pays well. Tax records filed by his business partner reveal his speaking engagements earned more than $560,000 in 2009. So why is, it, why is the skepticism? If somebody collects half a million dollars, I think it goes to my pocket. It's absolutely untrue. Like his answers, his tax return is vague on specifics. And his various businesses and foundations, well, that's vague too. Um, you, how much do you get paid for these? Not that, not that much. I mean, if you look at my salary, I make like a type of uh, what a gas station makes, what a garage makes. I mean, everybody thinks I'm just drinking in the dough, which is absolutely incorrect. Yeah. The Walid Shabbat Foundation, is that a charity? Yeah. Walid Shabbat Foundation is part of the FFMU. And what does the FFMU do? Basically, we're in the information, and we, we do speaking, and we do also helping Christians that are being persecuted in countries like Pakistan and uh, we, we help Christians who are suffering all throughout the, the Middle East. And how do you do that? None of your business. <laughs> Isn't it anyone's business who donates to you? Of course, but you see, a lot of the times if you disclose information who you're helping, you know, it ends up biting them. The business, in fact, Shubat leaves up to his manager, Keith Davies, who was down the hall selling Shubat's anti-Islam books. When CNN had specific questions about the business, like perhaps the names of the high-ranking generals and experts he said are on his board of advisors, well, Shubat said, get the names from Davies. Walid said that you would be able to tell us about your advisory board. You guys said you have generals and other high-ranking officials. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Can you tell us who they are? Um, off the top of my head, yes. Let me see. Uh, I'm trying to think. The name's gone blank. But I'll come back to me in a second. A ma uh, major general, uh, um, four star, four star, is a three star general of the Air Force, Irish name, Thomas. I usually know these off by heart instead of them. Um, Davies did come up with one name, a pilot, but no contact details despite repeated requests from CNN. We made calls to the individual anyway, but he never called us back. The group's public tax forms lists only Davies and a real estate developer as board members, both with the same address. Shubat and Davies run several foundations and three websites that are all linked. A confusing model, considering the group's tax returns for the past four years contain very little information. In fact, while Shubat has a foundation bearing his name, no tax forms could be found on public sites. Davies said they are merged together. The only question Wally said I should ask you is about the money. You don't, uh, that's, you don't ask anybody else here about the money. Well, you have all these foundations, and I'm trying to find out where this money goes in terms of charity. What is the foundation? Well, most of the money is used to help persecuted Christians in the Middle East. Uh, that the media doesn't want to talk about. I'll talk about it if you can give me any information about. Yeah, you have. We have a we have a website that you can have all the information about what we do on our website. It's rescuechristians.org. I read that. It's right. very unspecific as to what exactly is going on, where the money is going. Keith, I gotta ask you because I do a lot of this type mm -hmm. of reporting on charity. Mm -hmm. organizations that collect money for various funds. Mm -hmm. Everything is not very transparent. This is, are you running a scam here? Oh, absolutely. A big scam. I'm not answering that, but you, you're, trying just to, you're trying to scam us all the time. We are a very legitimate organization. We've been um, around for eight years. Uh, we, uh, six or seven years, four of the Middle Eastern Islam files with the IRS. And you can have a look at the, at the forms. I can even send a copy of the tax returns if you want. He never did, but we found some on other websites. 
The money is coming from universities and churches and from your tax dollars. Some of his appearances are paid out of Homeland Security grants. The DHS in South Dakota told us Shubat was paid $5,000 plus expenses to speak at this event, and he was given security. But Shubat told us, No, there's no expenses to pay. The hotel I paid myself. The hotel I paid today myself. The bigger question may be why Walid Shabbat is in South Dakota teaching a bunch of cops about Islamic terrorists, a state that has so few Muslims. A local newspaper here in Rapid City says only a couple of dozen live here year-round. Jim Carpenter is South Dakota's Homeland Security Director. What, what was the point of bringing him here? I think he brings a point of view that certainly is not necessarily mainstream. It's not a South Dakota-based point of view. Uh, he brings in commentary about living and being raised as a Muslim and then converting over to Christianity. So why would someone's religious conversion be important to a Homeland Security Conference in Rapid City, South Dakota? You know, I really couldn't figure that out, and based on further questions, I really didn't get a good answer from Jim Carpenter with the South Dakota Department of Homeland Security. The Federal Department of Homeland Security, Anderson, we went to, trying to find out if they do any vetting of speakers, if they had any idea about Shubat. If anyone in the federal government did what we have done, try to check out all his claims. Well, what we got from Homeland Security was a statement that said, if states use DHS grants for speakers, it's up to the states to vet them. We also got this, if training programs do not meet these standards, DHS standards, corrective action will be taken. We have not and will not tolerate training programs, says the DHS, or any DHS-supported program that rely on racial or ethnic profiling. Anderson, based on the three sessions we sat in on with Walid Shabbat and our interview with him, we can tell you he does advocate profiling and flatly being suspicious of anybody who's a Muslim. And his reaction to you kind of turned ugly. Yeah, it sure did. Not just him, too. South Dakota's Homeland Security people, they actually tried to keep us out of the conference. We got in only after they had to call the governor's office. As for Shubat, he did get testy later sessions. After that interview, he began attacking the media, specifically CNN, for doubting his story. He has since accused us, and you, Anderson, of being used by the Council on American-Islamic Relations, even suggesting that group was the primary source for our reporting, which, of course, is not true. Uh, and, and it's interesting, I mean, if somebody's running a legitimate foundation that's tax-exempt and stuff, I mean, uh, usually they're very willing to be transparent and willing to give documents and stuff. It sounds like those guys were saying, oh yeah, we'll send you these documents, and then nothing shows up. No, and it's all wrapped in this secrecy and security. Uh, they're under the impression we're asking for the names of right, some Christian families in the Middle East that are being persecuted. We're not. We're just trying to figure out where is the money going? Because we cannot find out where this money is going. Well, it's also interesting in your piece because Shubat said, oh, well, this foundation uh, is part of this other thing and it pays for speaking and teaching, which basically is what he does, and, oh, and also uh, helping Christians. The other guy said oh, it mainly goes to helping Christians, and yet again, no details. And I think you could see from the reporting we couldn't get a straight answer about anything from just about anybody. That reporting continued in our various emails and contacts with these fellows after that. Uh, it was just a very confusing, and in the past when we've done reporting like this, the more confusing, uh, the, the less transparent things are, the more questions need to be asked, I think, by DHS and other federal authorities. Yeah, interesting that they haven't been. Uh, Drew, appreciate the reporting. Great job as always. Thanks. Coming up. Uh